Chapter Nineteen: Blind Man's Bluff. They say this is the role of the artist: to walk the line between order and chaos, to create a door between the known and the unknown. I think this is what we do when we tell stories, or when we follow a tune we haven't heard before. And sometimes this is what we do when we try to experience familiar things in a whole new way. Part two: The Blindfold. The experiment was to experience a place and dine in the absence of one vital sense, so that it stimulates other senses. I got the idea from a book I was reading at the time. I invited two friends to participate, one to take pictures, and the other to help me avoid tripping into a ravine. After sorting out our little miscommunication with the magazine editor, we arrived at our first sponsored lodging the following afternoon. They welcomed us with a free meal. Mark and Anna ordered onion soup and tomato soup, which looked indistinguishable from one another. One definitely tasted of onions. The other certainly didn't remind us of tomato. The flavor seemed to have gone to some other dish, along with its red color. Anna tried to resuscitate it with salt and pepper. Our free room was windowless and detached from the main house, next to the garage. We were in glee. It had two beds and its own bathroom. With heated water, that was easy to figure out. As I came out from a hot shower, I saw Anna all set for sleep, on the bed, facing the wall. I said to her, "I'm done. Your turn." She grabbed the pillow under her head and laid it in the middle of the bed. There, that'll do," she said. "I'll take a shower in the morning." Mark slept in the other bed. Before we turned out the lights, I asked Anna to blindfold me with tape and gauze. She did so obligingly, and was very generous with the tape. There was no way for me to steal a peek. Then she made me listen to a familiar song that was sung in a way I hadn't heard before. It sounded like this. <laughs> I could hear Anna smile at my mouse reaction to the peculiar singing. I slept in my hiking clothes so that all I had to do the next morning was brush my teeth. All set and disabled, I carried two things with me: a walking stick and a voice recorder. Before starting the experiment, I had imagined it would feel like walking in a dark room, but instead, it looked more like entering a room that was as bright as a blank white page on a computer screen. The glare made me squint underneath my blindfold. I tried closing my eyes underneath, but that made me feel like I'm getting ready for bed. It made me feel less alert. And I didn't want to eat my breakfast feeling half asleep, so I decided to keep staring at the blank white page for the rest of the day, and imagine my immediate environment based on what I could taste, hear, touch, and smell. I thought I would miss shoving my breakfast in my mouth, but I managed to finish it without missing a mark. There was nothing surprising about my invisible omelet. I remember. It smelled just like scrambled eggs, but when I try recalling it now, it tasted like moving plates and coffee cups, and people talking in the distance. I had 24 hours to get used to this.